everyone, and welcome to Dice Roll, the Queer's Path Forward podcast on planet where Sahara questions like, what impressions can you guys do? Oh, I could do a really, I could do a Jennifer Coolidge, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't, I don't think it's very good, but oh. It's really good. I really want a hot dog, <laughs> oh. Let's <laughs> go. Um, okay, I, uh, the question asker. her, um, what I love about this question is that uh, they preface it with a statement, right? Uh-huh. They uh, preface it with, there you does a spot on Sean Connery voice. Um, Do you? I Okay, so I think he's referencing to Captain Longsaddle, who speaks like this. He's oh. this voice here, right? <laughs> That's fair. Okay. Um, now, I, see it now. I, have a con- I have a confession. Yeah. I did have to look up what Sean Connery sounds like Are before the session to be like, because it's, I'm not doing an impression of him when I do that voice. That just happens. <laughs> it's just unintentional, um, like, just like that. <laughs> I am doing an impression, but it's not of him, which means it's a very bad impression. <laughs> I'm trying to do Brian Cox, the guy who plays uh, Logan Roy in Succession. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> it does not work. Oh my god. It does sound like Sean Connery, but it does not sound like the guy I was trying to imitate. <laughs> um, <laughs> Sorry, babe. It's really what funny. But the rest of you, do any of you have any impressions that you can, you you have in your in your back pockets? I swear I did, but I literally forget anytime people ask. <laughs> what you're really good at doing is you're really good at like imitating oh, uh, voices you no, literally just heard. I, I okay. okay, so I don't have like a particular person. But I do have mm-hmm. a really. I can copy every VTuber on Earth. Oh, okay, hit, hit us with a. F- We're in your Twitch chat right now, okay? Oh God! Uh, one of Take us just subbed. Hit us. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome to the stream. Today we'll be playing Among Us. <laughs> Kill yourself. God, I, you could make money off that, brother. You I could, could. You could fucking go could. online and milk some fucking weebs out of everything they've got. I you really could. could. Like, because I don't know. I the first time I'd ever heard that voice, I was like, "You are copying anime girls." And then I was like, "I wonder if I could do that," and I could. <laughs> <laughs> I have scared it's, many a coworker with that one because I talk like this so... at work too. So they're like, "Why?" Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, you don't like it? And none of them like it. <laughs> it. It reminds me of when the fucking trailer for Ruby Phoenix came out, and uh, it had a clip of Sanku in it, and <laughs> someone was like, oh my god, is Dave not in this one? Hmm. <laughs> no, he's just doing a really high-pitched voice. Ooh, like, sorry, man, I just can do that. <laughs> Pretty funny. Luna, do you have any accent or any uh, any surprises in your repertoire? No. Not really. <laughs> You're so matter of fact about it. <laughs> you, you don't have any uh, imitations, no. but you're like weirdly good at doing British accents, like yeah. frighteningly so. Yeah. Um, they're not even the people that colonized us. How'd you do that? Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. I unfortunately, watched a lot of Harry Potter as a kid. <laughs> it's oh like no! That. It's it's okay, KK. Okay, okay. Real. It's okay. <laughs> I, mean, oh. <laughs> I could do a really specific I could do two really specific ones but I I have to like really warm up for them so uh, so I can't really do them right now but I, I can do mm-hmm. um s- ever since taking tea I can do a really good uh Calypso Lemonade Kid voice oh my uh, god <laughs> that's true and also so true. the the um Grandma in Hell from Smiling Friends voiced by Zach Hadel oh my god Jesus. I also well, guys, want you to know um, something that I will die mad about mm. is um, obviously my accent is really tick, right? You're telling us. Uh, well, yeah. Tick enough, right? I can't fucking TH yeah, for the life tick. of me. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm you sorry. Got to, <laughs> you've got to kill him, Derry. Um, <laughs> my favorite thing is whenever someone like because i do like accents for fucking dice or roll um Mm -hmm. but every i every time i do an accent it's an accent (laughs) with a little bit of irish in it (laughs) because i can i can do german but there's the german person still not gonna say their ths (laughs) i mean to be like to be fair like that's just like like you're you're uh because the accents are just the way that your mouth 
sounds words, and I don't yeah. think you know how to use the th. Yeah, I mean, like it, it is a thing. Um, the Irish language, uh, not Gaelic. It's not Gaelic. I'm gonna get so fucking angry. The Irish <laughs> language um, does not have a th sound in it. Um, mm. So we just. <laughs> I, I just uh, <laughs> you just. I'll ball. teach you sometime, babe. I don't care to. You know what? <laughs> It's everyone else's problem but my own. Do we want to play some Pathfinder? It's everyone else's problem. <laughs> Do we want to play some Pathfinder? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to pat some finders. I, I'm gonna find Patrick! <laughs> Patrick! Where are you? Anyway, do, we wanna, do you want to find Pat? Yeah, I would fucking love to find Pat. Where's that cunt been all this time? <clears throat> when we last left our adventurers in the Abomination Vaults, the Fog Fen few were tangling with the ghost of Chandriu Invisar, the departed lover of Volok Azenre. You were able to convince her that Azenre did not treat her right and that she needed to let go of him and move on to the next world. Not before Fiore had his heart stopped by a ghostly hand, but I digress. <coughs> Happens. After dealing with her, you made your way back to the fiend Korlak and received some information about the legions of devils that once inhabited this dungeon before leaving a long time ago. And with that, you made your way deeper and found a strange hermit living beneath the gauntlet. Very quickly, you were able to identify him as the werewolf Jean Mesmin, the Otari werewolf, a serial killer who attacked the good people of this town 30 years ago, including the wife of Kilano Latinar. You were able to defeat him in combat, but not before Fiore was bitten by the werewolf, inflicting him with a curse he will now need to have removed from him. You tied him up, and now you bring him back to Otari to face justice for the crimes he committed three decades ago. How about we cut back to the fog fan as you guys march the battered werewolf back to the town that he terrorized. Sure. Silk, Fiore, and Alric. The three of you walk through the fog fen with the werewolf, Jean Mesman. The evening sun is setting as you make your way back towards the town. Mesman is bound and gagged because if he were able to speak, I'm sure you would not like the things he has to say. In the distance, in the swamp, you see lights flickering. Will-o'-wisps, maybe? Servants of Nimbalot? Who's to say? As you approach a town, which slowly begins to appear on the horizon, the three of you have a difficult task to face. Where are you going to take the werewolf? You all know that the town is not necessarily going to be the best equipped to hold a monster quite as dangerous as this. The guards certainly won't be able to stop him if he gets loose. But is it right to have him put to death? If so, do you deliver him to the guards? Do you bring him to Kilano Latinar? The man that he was wronged by? The Dawnflower Temple? Or perhaps the Stone Ring Pond? The Circle of Druids which he once belonged to and now and forever regrets ever allowing him in? <sighs> yeah, Jinkies. That's really rough, huh? <laughs> um, I think as they're walking uh, and he's kind of <laughs> shuffling behind them, I imagine. Um, so kind of looks back uh, and says, So, we all know the town can't keep him. Mm -hmm. So what do we do with him? He was a druid, right? Would they be keen on receiving him back? There are a number of things this man needs to answer for. Not just with the druids, but with Kilno as well. Mm -hmm. The many families this man has taken the lives of. 
To be honest, I don't know what the right answer is. But you have a point. The town can't keep him. I guess he's a bit of a free-for-all, isn't he? Seems as such. Clearly none of us have any... jurisdiction over him. He's personally done nothing to us other than fight, I suppose. I mean... No. He's... Then it'd most likely be between the druids and the victims, right? Mm-hmm. I'd agree. Perhaps we could stop by and have a word with them before we reach town. Let them know that we're bringing him there. The druids? He nods. I agree. They're on the way, and he affected them too. Yeah. M- maybe if we bring him back, maybe some more of the trust between the druids and the people will come back. Oh, I think so. So, do you guys want to stop by the Stone Ring Pond and announce an unwelcome returning face? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, on you go. You walk until you find the path you're looking for. Two dozen standing stones, each exactly 12 feet high, stand sentinel around the shores of a shallow pond. The waters are unusually reflective, painting back a perfect image of the sky above and as you approach it yourselves. There are beehive... Is that, is that the term? One second. Beehive... Do you guys know what a beehive hut is? Uh, no, I'm Californian. Okay. <laughs> like this, the, I guess this is a very Irish thing, actually. Like those boxes? No. Oh, I don't know then. No. There are buildings nearby. Not near the pond, but like... Closer to the uh, edge of the woods. Um, a couple of houses. Uh, they're beehive huts. Um... If you're a home, Google it. Another word for it is Clocon. Uh, they're these like stony huts um, that kind of like create a square house with an open door and then a domed ceiling made entirely of like paving rocks. Um, if you watch Star Wars uh, in The Last Jedi, it's what Luke's hiding in. Oh. Oh, okay. Uh, sorry, I, I forget that these are <laughs> things I take for uh, for granted. Oh yeah, fucking clock-ons. Everyone knows what these things are. No, <laughs> you've all seen them. You've all been inside them. They're smaller than they look. Um, but there are these like little hu- like stone huts nearby where the druids themselves live. There's maybe um two dozen of these guys, and heads turn when you all approach some of them seem to grasp the gravity of the person coming with you not everyone but some of them Mm -hmm. and when Segek the leader of the druids the dark scaled marine iguana Eruxi he stands up and he sees you approaching and sees this bearded man his eyes narrow and he approaches who is this is it who I think it may be yes Jal Mesman yes he was living in the dungeon all this time Mm-hmm. He steps forward and gingerly he brings his hand to Jaws, to Mesmin's face and pulls the gag out of him and Mesmin kind of chokes a little bit for air. And Segek looks at him. He says nothing and Mesmin just looks up and smiles and says Segek. You've 
aged badly. Oh, your scales are flaking. He kind of looks around and says, There's fewer of us than I remember. Surely you're not the leader now. Segek stands stoic. And he speaks and says, Jal, you were my brother. We welcomed you into our town. We ate from the same table as you. And the crimes you committed were monstrous. Have you nothing to say for yourself after 30 years? And Mesmin smiles a little wider and says, Only to let you know that come the full moon, nothing will hold me back from bringing ruin to your people once more. Ropes, stone, nothing will keep me imprisoned. So you'll need to kill me or face the facts and let me run free. Sugek says nothing, and he gestures to some other druids. Older ones, I think, are the ones who respond first, who come closer and bring more rope to tie him even tighter. Jal Mesmin is dragged away into one of the huts, but before he leaves, he turns and looks at you, Tree, and he smiles a sharp fanged smile. Sagek turns to you, Tree, now, and he looks at you and says, All this time, 30 years later, and he's alive, and he's been hunting on our doorstep, and yet you, Tree, captured him. How could this be? We have been traveling deeper underground in the dungeon in the fog pen and we found him living in there but you were able to feed him no easy task <laughs> it took a mob the last time I know because I was there hmm. who shall tell Lassenar. I can handle that. I'll see to it. I have something to return to him anyway. Oh my god. Fuck me. I forgot <sighs> about it. Oh. I'm gonna throw up right now. Sagek looks at you, Alric, and he nods and says, Master Rafra, it occurs to me that you are an herbalist. Am I mistaken? No, you are correct. <laughs> we will need to confer with Latinar and the other victims, which we will handle once you bring Latinar here and tell him everything. But he paces for a second and he turns his back to you and says, We cannot keep a man like this in the town, not while he remains a risk at least once every month. During the full moon, a werewolf becomes exceptionally powerful. Mm -hmm. You are lucky you did not encounter him under the moon's light. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Normally, one would be able to cast Cleanse Affliction to remove the curse of lycanthropy. Mm -hmm. But he kind of stops and looks over his shoulder again. But this only works for those who are cursed with the affliction. Some people are born with it. A oh. naturally born werewolf cannot have the curse removed because there is no curse. It is simply who they are. Hmm. But there is one way. And now he turns back to you, Alric. Mr. Avra. Are you aware of the effects of Wolfsbane? Uh, of course. 
And I want you, Ulrich. I think you know that Wolfsbane stops werewolves. Period. Yes. Right? Yes. It's the, it's the plant silver bullet. Name. Yeah. However, uh, would you like to make me a nature check to know exactly how it does so? Yes. Okay. Yeah. No. Y- 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 come on. Come on. Matt. It's your area of expertise. <laughs> yeah. So Wolfsbane. It appears in folklore for its link to were creatures. It is poisonous. Yep. However, if a werewolf is uh, fed wolfsbane and they survive its poison, lycan- they are immediately cured of their lycanthropy. Interesting. Oh. Even Holy if they are a naturally born werewolf. Now, in the real world, wolfsbane is pretty common. Yeah, absolutely. However, actually, like, taking the wolfsbane plant and turning it into the poison which is required to, like, cure lycanthropy is quite difficult. Um, Like, it is... You need the exact right measurements. Otherwise, it is literally just a poison that will kill you, you know? Um, Which makes it quite hard to actually get in its proper form. It is a level 10 item. (laughs) Uh, okay. What you know about it is that if they take, if they survive being fed this poison, which is not easy because at stage three it will do twenty d six damage, and oh. they need to, they need to reach at least stage three. They will be taking extra damage on top of that. You guys would probably need to heal it like fairly regularly, like while he's suffering against it so like as he's like on the floor trashing pumping healing magic into him to make sure he survives you know Mm -hmm. that's what you know about wolfsbane he looks at you and says if we can procure wolfsbane we can take away the one weapon he has used without fail countless times whether it is true growing it yourself finding it or purchasing it in Absalom we need Wolfsbane the next full moon is mere weeks from now if you can bring that to us before then you could help us stop the Otari werewolf once and for all and then he can be kept in a cell like any other prisoner you do not find Wolfsbane before the next full moon we will likely need your aid in ensuring he does not escape is this something we can ask of you adventurers something we will reward you for if you do help us I would be willing to help Uh, yes I can help with this but it's going to be tight I do hope you're aware of that even if I am able to grow it in my own garden, that takes a long while, even to germinate and everything. Not to mention how many seeds I would need. Even getting it from Absalom, I don't even... <sighs> it is expensive to purchase it itself. How much does it cost? Alright, you know this. It's 150 gold for one single dose. <laughs> 150 for one if you do not find it in time we will manage but we will need your help to keep him contained for the night surely that's something we can do I would most appreciate it we would most appreciate it It kind of gestures to the other druids nearby some of them are young and don't understand exactly but those who are older you can see in their tired eyes what a big deal this is to them. This is someone that they knew. This is someone they were close to. This is someone they thought dead and no longer something they have to think about. And now he's back. And they're all very scared. We'll help you contain him. And I will do everything I can to get Wolvesbane. Thank you, Master Refra. 
Master Sunchaster and Master Witchhelm. Fuck Fenfew, you truly are the heroes of Otari. <laughs> and as he smiles, a set of words appear before you all. Quest, Quest accepted. accepted. Curing the Otari werewolf. <laughs> Jal Mesmin has been captured. But so long as he remains a natural werewolf, he becomes a serious threat at least once a month. During this time, he will be afflicted by moon frenzy, which makes him marginally more dangerous than even his normal werewolf form. While the druids can safely contain him during the full, uh, while the druids can safely contain him most nights, on nights where the moon is full, he will become desperately difficult to control. Objectives: Stop Jaw Mesmin from escaping on the full moon. Find Wolfsbane, and keep Jaw Mesmin alive while the Wolfsbane takes effect on him. And rewards. He hasn't said, but certainly already he will give you a 20% discount on all uh, purchases you make from the Druid's craft in the Stone Ring Pond Slay. for life. Oh, my Damn. God. Good God. He, they, they create quite a lot of stuff, um, a lot of lightning, storm, and sea stuff, mm. and they will give you big discounts already. And if you help them with the rest of this quest, you will be granted some especially rare treasures. Damn. Sagek bows his head and tanks and says, Thank you, adventurers. You have earned the respect of Stone Ring Pond once and for all. Just doing my job. So, with that, what do you guys want to do? Do you want to head back into town? Where are you headed now? Viewer wants to go home. <laughs> There's definitely someone to be talked to. Yeah, yeah. that's gonna be fun. Ooh. <laughs> um, I think before they leave, uh, Silk kind of puts a hand on Ulrich's shoulder, uh, and says, "Did you want to go alone? I could use the company." Oh. And I'll be there. I appreciate that. Really. Fiore, would you like to go as well? Or do you want to go <laughs> tell your mom, hey, mom, uh, forget <laughs> Silk like for I one night, please. <laughs> hey, mom, oh, forget Silk for just one night. <laughs> <laughs> so guess what happened? Mom. Crazy story. You're never going to believe it. <laughs> <laughs> you know your darling, beloved son? <laughs> Would I still love him if he were a dog? <laughs> he comes home and he goes, Would you still love me if I was a werewolf? And they're like, Hello. <laughs> God. Uh, uh. Fury, you have the curse right now. But the curse is inactive until the full moon. Uh, that full moon, uh, today is uh, Wheel Day, that's Fantasy Wednesday. Uh, the 11th of Desnus, that's Fantasy May. Uh, 4722. The next full moon is on the 29th. So that is two and a half weeks from now. So long as you are cured of the curse by then, you're good. Presumably, though, you want to get that shit off as quickly as possible. Y yes, he would. From what you can tell, though, uh, your mom is the only person in town who has cleanse affliction. Not that no one else does, but like, she's the only one who has it powerful enough. You know what I mean? Mm hmm to reliably get rid of stuff more than, like, a cold. Yeah. Although perhaps the druids could be cajoled into helping if you needed. I don't for think now, that he wants to tell strangers before talking it to his mother. Fair enough. Um, do you want to go with Ulrich and Silk? I could do that, yeah. Okay. Uh, so you guys make your way into town. And as you walk into town... Already, people are turning to look at you with wide eyes. There's rumors swirling already. Apparently, some people might have seen you on the way 
into town with a mysterious figure stopping at Stone Ring Pond. As you all make your way through the streets, there's whispers of the brave heroes of Atari and their latest incredible feats. But you ignore them. And you make your way into the Otari market to the log cabin where Kilo no Latinair stays. It's evening. The markets are busy. So the three of you stride in and Kilo no is behind the desk and he looks up his hat off his head uh, revealing his now balding hair and he offers a smile when he sees the tree enter and says right well if it isn't a folk fen few how are you all doing tonight everyone pretty good um <laughs> you've seen a little scraped up you sure you're well <laughs> you too he looks at you fury and silk who are pretty <laughs> fucked honestly <laughs> You look like you could use a bed and a bat. Ha. I uh, we feel. could. Don't worry about us. We're fine. Really. Is something the matter? Can we talk to you privately? Uh, yeah. Go clo- lock the door behind you, Sol. Uh, yeah. Uh, I think Fiori does that. He turns and looks to you all. You might want to sit down. Uh, all right. You found something in the dungeon. Something I think belongs to you. What do you mean? And he takes out the locket and sets it down on the desk. Kilano is a stoic man. But when his eyes come over that locket, his face kind of goes limp. Like he doesn't know what he's seeing almost it looks like he's seen a ghost and he does look up at you all his mouth dropping a little bit what, 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 what is this what is this My, how how did it end up in the dungeon How did, I, how did I get there? Ulrich looks to Silken Fiore with eyes that say, Do we tell him the whole story? I think Silk Fiore nods. Not, Fiore nods. <laughs> yeah. You were right. This entire time you were correct. He was living off of the lands. No. And made his home in the fourth bottom floor. Of the dungeon. I'm so sorry. He, did, did you kill him? No. He's in we have possession him. of the druids. Mm-hmm. They're not going to let him go, are they? No. 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 In fact, I've been tasked with removing his lycanthropy. Forever. What, what do you mean? Wolvesbane. Right. <laughs> you, you, <laughs> you fucking neutered him. <laughs> Chopping his fucking balls off. <laughs> He's there now. Yes. He fucking gets up. I would but be still... careful before seeing him. He is not. He still... is not a good man. He'll do his best to get under your skin, and you certainly do not want to hear what he has to say. He'll know. He's still incredibly dangerous. He is just grinning and says, Oh, I think I want to go see him. Please, I, I've i spent 30 years wanting to see that face one more time. 
Please, take me. I'm, I'm begging you. Let me go see him. I'm not going to stop you from finding closure, but I'm warning you that it, you will probably feel bad afterwards. I don't think so. Could be comforting to see him in a cell, at the very least. <laughs> that is true. He is bound like a dog. Take me to his kennel. Please, just take me. This entire time that we've had the werewolf in our possession, Ulrich has been incredibly stone-faced. Mm -hmm. And that has stayed the whole time. Mm -hmm. Ulrich is now trying to read his family friend. Okay. Make me a perception check. All right. You take a good look at him. This is a man with many feelings right now. But strongest through all of them is absolute vindication. The last 30 years of his life have not been in vain. He has not hoped that one day someone would find the monster in vain. It was all for something. And now he gets to see what he has wanted for three decades. He's not going to try to talk to him. He just wants to see this man in chains. Okay. We'll lead you to him. Just don't get too close. Promise me that. I promise you. Okay. You take Kilano through the streets, back up the hill towards Stone Ring Pond. Mm -hmm. Well, if there were mumblings and uh, murmurings before, when it was just a tree of you walking in true town, with Mr. Latinar behind you, oh. there's more. Everyone knows what this is about now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what I reckon probably happened is like someone was like, hey, I just saw the Fog Fan Few bring a man in chains into the Stone Ring Pond. And from there, people started talking quickly. It's maybe been 20 minutes since you got back to town. And now there are more people. And I think a few even following you. Some of them are like, you know, people just looking like, oh my god, what's going on? But there are a few older people who you reckon were probably affected by this monster as well. Mm -hmm. A lot of the victims of the Otari werewolf moved away, their family. They couldn't bear to be in this town, but a few remained. And Kilano marches with you. He is just focused on getting there as fast as possible. You enter the village again. Sugek comes out and he tries to say something, but Kilano just puts his hands and says, Where is he? He should be in one of these huts, yes? Sagek quietly raises a finger and points to a hut with four, <laughs> four druids outside. Yeah, probably that one, huh? I wonder yeah, where he out. is. Yeah. <laughs> um, the door has been turned to stone, I will say. Ooh. Like, oh boy. Hey, they, they got magic here, guys. They did petrify the door to be like, no, no, no. Damn. The door is uh, turned back to wood. And Kilano Latiner enters. It's a cramped space. The furniture here has been removed. It is just the Otari werewolf. Mesmin is in chains on the floor. When he sees Kilano enter, he stands up, arms bound to his side, eyes wild. <sighs> he grins. Well, if it isn't Kilo Latner. And Kilo Latner, with the strength of 
30 years of rage, punches this man in the fucking face. A toot goes flying. And Jean Mesmin is out cold. And waving the ha- blood off his hand, both his own and Jaws, Kilano starts to laugh, starts to cry, and lets out a final howl of emotion as he stands over the killer of his wife, vindicated at last. God. You guys watch as Kilno leaves a little while later, wiping tears from his eyes. Sagek approaches him again and tries to say something, but once again, Kilno interrupts, but this time it's by hugging him. Sagek flinches, but carefully he wraps his hands around the, the man and the two victims of the werewolf find solace with one another. You have saved the relationship between Latinar and the Druids. You've saved the reputation of the Druids in general. And you saved Kilano. I think when you return to town, Kilano was not quiet about what happened. He is fucking telling everyone. <laughs> and I think it is a night of festivity. Uh, every tavern in the, ta- in the town uh, is throwing festivities. Um, there are people on the streets singing and dancing and drinking like there's no tomorrow. And the tree of you, anywhere you go, you are celebrated. Um, do you guys do anything special for the evening? Obviously, Fiora, you do go back at some point and talk to moms. Mm-hmm. But aside from that, we'll get we'll get to that. Um, how do you guys spend the night that you caught the Otari werewolf? Hmm. I think Silk uh, invites both of them to drink. <laughs> I think Ulrich takes that actually. Yeah. <laughs> the heart in a heartbeat, just <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Boy needs to calm down. <laughs> it, yeah, it's not even like a let's go drinking. Silk straight up brings them uh, <laughs> <laughs> two drinks. <laughs> um, I mean, everyone has the same idea. The, the drunken dragon is so packed tonight. <laughs> everyone comes out to drink. I mean, it's it's thirty years of horror finally being put to an end, right? Yeah. Jenny Rumwall, the proprietor of the Drunken Dragon, serves the most bizarre alchemical cocktails. San and Evanwer are both working double time tonight. Even Laz de Benkerville, who so often looks glum, is nothing but smiles today. And there's other people as well. Um, you, you are approached at one point by... Uh, Carmen, Carmen Rajani, who throws his ha- your like he, I think he takes like uh, eeny meeny miny silk silk. He takes your hand and throws it in the air and says, "For the fuck, Fen Few, can oh. I get a cheer?" And everyone is cheering, you know. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think the city get the like the town watch arrive at some point. And Long Saddle is with them. He doesn't come to drink. He's here to make sure no one gets too rowdy. Business only. He's business only. And he catches the sigh of you, Tree. And he has a look on his face, right? That says, How dare you not bring this murderer to the gods? That is our job. I will have a serious talk with you later about respecting the law. Um... He's not going to approach you tonight. No. Better not approach us ever. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly. You guys are heroes in the town. Tamley Tandervale, uh, the 
uh, lady who owns the fishery uh, is talking about all the stories she's heard of you and embellishing quite a few. I heard that they took on an army of of Morlocks. There was maybe 20 of them on top of a mountain of bones, and they took them all down. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uncontested. Uncontested. Um, I think Morlabent is here, of course, and he does uh, take a drink in your honor, and when you tell him about the books, he starts salivating. <laughs> what, what do you mean? You found a copy of What the Worm Knows? Don't you know it? Just with your name on it, too. I don't think you understand how rare that book is. The author was burned at the stake. We found more than one, I think. <laughs> what do you mean multiple, found more than... And I understand what? quite well how rare it is. You're, you're okay. Multiple? I'll be keeping multiple one for myself in my own what personal uh, collection, but... Of what? course I can spare one for you, Maury. These... Okay, okay, I can transcribe them. Oh my... Oh my word. Um... <laughs> Cards! He's fucking he stumbling away. <laughs> and you know what? I think at some point, uh... Ever make me a perception check. Okay. I love to perceive. Ulrich, you are the one who sees her outside. She's not coming in, but Rince of Inksy is standing outside looking in through the window. Do you want to go out and say hi? Uh, yeah, I think he alerts the other two like, hey, uh, Rince outside? Oh! Uh, go say hi to her. Yeah, yeah. Come, come on. You make your way out, and she grins and says, Fuck, then, you! Ah! Hi. Hello. Pleasure to see you, as always. Is this true? You, you captured big-time murderer? We did. Yeah. <laughs> Somehow. This is incredible. Fuck, then, you... You are like heroes from storybooks. <laughs> the, sh- the stars shine bright tonight. I think good things are coming. Scary things, yes, but good nonetheless. And I am so happy that it is you three I asked to come investigate Dungeon. I think she pulls you onto a big group hug. Oh. She kicks a little leggy out when she does it. Oh. <laughs> I'm glad you asked us too. Could you get, could you get me drink? Oh, you can't get one yourself. She doesn't want to go inside. And go inside. One, two, three, four, oh. four corners on each side. I'm. It is dead trap. Again, if I go corners. in. Yes. The hounds will emerge, and then it would. With... Total mood killer if that happens. Okay. <laughs> Let people have lovely night. We'll, we'll get you a drink for it. What, what would you like? I, I don't suppose they have elven wine. Uh, <laughs> I don't suppose they do. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> uh, likely. If not, I, I will have a um, pint of mystery juice. You give me whatever. Rain drinks anything. <laughs> Bryn wants the jungle juice. God. Give me jungle juice. <laughs> oh my god. That sounds dangerous. Okay. Uh, we'll, we'll get you something, don't worry. You guys have a lovely rest of the night. I think uh, Evangu reminds you, don't forget dinner date tomorrow when you're back from the dungeon. Or if you're not going to the dungeon, dinner date. All of you. All of this is news to you. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I no. Then, if Anwar says that in front of everyone, and Silk, uh, who's kind of drunk to be honest, is like, oh, I wanted to tell him myself. 
Wait, you didn't tell your date that there's a date? <coughs> <coughs> Honestly, how did you? I this is about double to... date. That's why I, I specifically asked for a double date. I'm not gonna do it in the dungeon. I didn't have the time. But you come out of the dungeon quite often. Well, you're in here every bloody day. To be fair, when we we've left the dungeon recently with kind of heavy energy. You know, I can't actually blame you for that. Not really. <laughs> Bringing home a werewolf serial killer isn't actually the best romance material. I mean, sorry, platonic between friends material. Hmm, definitely platonic. Oh, is chugging his wine. <laughs> <laughs> Tomorrow, 7 p.m. Yeah. I'm coming. Silk looks directly at Auric. Yeah, yeah. We'll be there. Wonderful. It's a date den. Between friends, obviously. Just <laughs> friend things. Sorry, <laughs> going back to his wine. <laughs> Fury, when the night is ending, you approach your moms. Okay. I think they are probably out as well, so you might have to, like, corner them out at some point and be like, hey, so... Mm-hmm. When do you tell them about what happened? Um, what happens is, I think he asks if he could talk to them privately for a minute. Okay. Rumina looks at you and is like, all right. Uh, hey, Vandy. And Vandy's like, huh? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just, mm. Yeah, I'm here. What's going on? Would you still love me if I was a werewolf? <laughs> the two of them exchange a look. This is is this happening in the bar, or did you like take them outside? Oh, you took them outside. <laughs> okay. Um The two of them exchange a look as the cold air blows over you. And Ramina's like Yeah, conceptually I would. Is there a reason you're asking? And Vandy's like, you'd be a really cute werewolf. You'd be a little puppy boy. <laughs> He's like, the werewolf guy bit me. Oh, uh, Boner eyebrows uh, fucking fly up. Uh, Vandy sobers up on the spot. Yep. She's like, what? Yep, sobering what? experience. Yep. <laughs> what? <laughs> you let. I didn't awful let man him. bit you! I didn't let him. It no, I know you didn't. I'll... Fiori, where did he get you? Show me. He shows it's on his shoulder, I think. Oh, no. Um. <sighs> no. Uh, okay, no, it's okay. And Ru- it, It's okay! We're alright, she says. And Ru was like, yeah, no, it's okay. Your mom's fine. It happens sometimes, Fiori, when you're adventuring. I mean, I got bit by a, a werebear once, and you got bit by a werebear. You got bit by a werebear. <laughs> was it that one? She says, "Yes, it was." You didn't tell me. I, I, I didn't want to worry you. I got kinds of affliction and kind of muscled out myself. Why didn't? <laughs> okay, that's fine. No, it's fine. That's all right. <laughs> that's okay. Don't worry. That's fine. You got bit by that werebear in... in Carrick? Yeah, the one in Carrick. <laughs> I cannot... Fiore. I'll cast Cleanse Affliction on you tomorrow. The one... one use, it'll be gone. Okay? And the curse hasn't manifested yet, so you're fine. Um, it would only be a problem if you waited weeks before telling me. She turns and looks at Rumina. <laughs> or years! <laughs> like, it's fine. Don't worry, it's fine. Okay. Um, <laughs> Silk will need to go one day without my clan's affliction, but he should be okay. We've got it kind of stable right now. Honestly, he might be able to recover on his own. Maybe. Okay. Cool. All right. Um, I'm staying with you for the rest of the night. Okay. 
she clutches onto your your side. <sighs> and as you're all winding up the night, Ulrich, you catch eyes with Kiel and Olafnar. And he has clearly had a lot to drink, but he's a hearty man, and he comes up to you, and I think he gives you a hug. And he says, I cannot thank you enough. I really, truly cannot thank you enough for everything you've done. The last 30 years have been torture. Wondering every night if I'm fighting for nothing. You made sure it was for something. Immediately, once we figured it out, you were the first person I thought of. And, um, I think he slides something into your hand. Uh, they look at it. What, what is, what is... It is a lockbox. What's this? This is the reward. They open the lockbox. Platinum coins. Lots of them. <laughs> uh, uh. There's 300 gold in there. You sure? That's the bounty I put out, and you claimed that bounty. Uh, I suppose. That's 10 gold for every year I've waited. I think it's more than worth it. Thank you. Do you take it? Yes, and he makes a note to split it with the rest of them. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone add 100 gold to your sheet. Please. Or rather 10 platinum, I guess. Yeah, Slay it. How's everyone doing right now as the night ends? Drunk. Yeah? How drunk? Very. <laughs> you know what, actually, Soak? Mm-hmm. How about... Okay. On a scale of one to five, how much alcohol did everyone drink tonight? With one being like, I had a sippy, and five being like, holy shit. It's either four or five for Silk. <laughs> I think Ulrich is maybe around a three, closing in on four. He was like a, like a two. Okay. I want everyone to make me a four, you'd save, just oh, to see how you're no. all doing. <laughs> Can uh, I fail mine on purpose? The- well, the DC will be quite high for you, Silk. Okay. And you God. are a wizard. Does, does the fact that Ulrich is part of, part of a Vintner family help out with his alcohol intake? Uh, <laughs> secret, please, by the way. Okay. And I'll, Ulrich, I'll give you a plus one on your save. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing, that's two. Um, oh, no. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, funny. <laughs> Ulrich... You're... You're a little drunk. You're, uh... <laughs> you are off guard, and you have a plus one to your saves against fear for the night. Yippee! Um, if you're a, you're also about that same level. Mm-hmm. Silk. <laughs> hey, what's up, man? So you rolled a ten total. Oh no. <laughs> My fortitude is plus eight. <laughs> Which would fail the basic alcohol <laughs> save for a single city. <laughs> You've had quite a lot more than that. Is that a crit fail? I, it is more than a crit fail. Oh, it's oh. practically two crit fails. Oh shit. <laughs> but Silk, I think I'm gonna say that you don't have a say a bonus against fear effects. You don't have a bonus. Uh, you're not even off guard, man. You are clumsy too and sickened too. Okay. <laughs> you're doing. Yeah, you're off your fucking rocker. Yeah. Porvo, for what it's worth, is trying to help you. Poor Porvo. Do you guys want to head back? What? How? How are we closing out tonight? When I head back home, call a night after a serious evening and partying. However, Silk gets home. <laughs> Fury, Fury has him over his shoulder. 
<laughs> I'll work is making sure that Silk doesn't get, like, get sick or anything. <laughs> so, I need you to know, Silk is like a talkative drunk. Oh no. Um, oh my god. And he's a little bit of a, um, what's the word? Passing his own boundaries type drunk. Oh. Oh no. Uh, so he's like mumbling shit as he's like being taken home. Probably just whatever he's thinking at the moment. <laughs> And what is he thinking? Oh god, I really don't want to go to Absalom. <laughs> Why not? Mm, I'm gonna have to end everything. End everything? <laughs> no one's gonna like me anymore. Why would we stop liking you? Because you're gonna find out I'm not very fun. Silk. What are you talking about? I think you're plenty lovely. You're currently being carried over Fiore's shoulder because you got a little too tipsy. This is a this is pretty fun. <laughs> you have nice shoulders, Fiore. <laughs> Thank you. He's like f he's full like dead body weight on Fiori, by the way. He's, like, dangling his, like, <laughs> arms are over the side. <laughs> Fiori is like, yeah, I'll just deal with that. <laughs> he's like, did something, did, did you know somebody in Absalom? Or, is, like, something? <laughs> I know everyone. How do you know everyone in a I'm so popular. You are pretty popular. And pretty. Th this is true? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you get to the front steps of Silk's place. Do you drop him off and let him hobble uh, back home to fall asleep somewhere? Or what's the plan? Fiore wants to take him to his bed. Yeah, Alric wants to make sure that Silk doesn't injure himself on his way to bed. <laughs> hey, Fiore! Holy shit, Silk has a big house! <laughs> yeah. He's like, whoa! This is huge! Yeah... Yeah. <sighs> Which way was his room again? <sighs> a light spell enters the room. And you hear a click, 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 click. Get out of here, burglars! Says an old man. Holy shit, Fiore! Ah! <laughs> We're no burglars, we're just taking Silk home. What? Mm. Hi, gonna. Who is this? Who? I don't know. Is that my professor? Y yes. He like his his head like kind of like drifts upward. Like his he, he's like being covered by all of his hair. By the way. Uh, yes. <laughs> this, th this is. <gasps> How do you know that? <laughs> what is happening? Context clues. Um. You're interrupting my reading. Terribly sorry. I I'm I'm so sorry, sir. <laughs> Just be taking. Silk up now. Too much partying. That's what's wrong with that boy. Oh, don't worry. It was very fun. It was. It was. It was good. We're just gonna make sure that he's home and comfortable and safe. I'm hungry. Would. What? Nothing. Go back to your reading. Everything's fine. <laughs> huh. He looks at you suspiciously. He looks at you, Fiore. Uh. Hello. Aren't you that young man with the she with the stick? Oh, by the way, Derry Silk tells everything to Ugonus about these two. Oh yeah, I know. Good. <laughs> with the stick. The stick? Yes. Running oh. around, waving a stick, chasing crows. Uh, what? Yes, <laughs> it must have been. Five, six years ago. He tries to remember. That sounds like something you might have done. That sounds like something you might have done when you were like young. Like, but not like five or six years ago. Uh, I haven't done anything like that since I was thirteen. What age are you? Uh, I'm twenty-three. No. Oh. Yes. <laughs> He does not look like he believes you. <laughs> He's got a grown man. 
You can leave that in the kitchen. He points at Silk. <laughs> I'm going to go back to reading now. That? And make sure to close the doors when you're leaving. Uh -oh. I can't have you delivery boys make a mess of my... my. You keep letting the animals in. Yes, sir. And with that, he fucking skitters off. Mumbling to himself. Silk, like, starts laughing. He's like, he <laughs> called me a boy. <laughs> he doesn't do that a lot. What is your living situation? Who is this guy? I'm just boarding with him. He's so kind. It... Who? He's my sponsor. Your sponsor for? Sponsor? Staying here. <laughs> <laughs> Are you just boarding with a random man? No. <laughs> he used to be my teacher. Oh. It was fun. None of mine. I can't remember. You don't remember? I'm too drunk. Uh, I'll ask you tomorrow. <laughs> I won't answer. <laughs> <laughs> At least in drunk, he's self-aware. <laughs> 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 so, do you guys plop him in the kitchen like a bag of potatoes like you were demanded? He's like, I'm taking you up to your room. Which one of the which one is yours? The really pretty one. The door wise, is it also decorated by the door? You've been there before, you should know. Alric <laughs> just looks at me alright, like We'll drop off Silk first, and then I'll let you know. <laughs> <laughs> Alric has never been to Silk's room. Yeah, <laughs> it's like I think he's just going along with it for Silk. Uh, oh, yes, yeah, okay. But to refresh, you have a big house. <laughs> Borbo kind of clicks <laughs> up and says, "Would you like me to take care of these from here?" Bor Borbo, that would be very appreciated. Okay. Hooray! Borbo is useful. Come, meet Master Silky. Can you walk? Yes, with your feet. One foot, two foot. I not have those. Then you must squirm like worm. Come, come! <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fjord, what do you do? I think he, like, watches. <laughs> you put him down, he starts <laughs> No, Silk falls asleep as soon as you put him down. Oh, oh my god. Borbo, let's say that. Before he... <laughs> Starts taking Silk and trying to drag him. Here, I'll... He picks him back up again, this time, like, bridal style, and he's like, just, Borbo, why don't you lead me there? Okay. And so, Borbo takes you. Oh, Silk, you're put in bed to slumber. And Alric and Fiore, the two of you, are able to leave. Fiore's like, who the hell is that guy? Is he really his professor? Uh, we're figuring things out on the same night. <laughs> what? I mean... <sighs> All I knew was that Silk was just... Living with this man. I didn't really want to pry into the why. What? Okay. Yeah. I'm a little curious as to why he's scared about going to Absalom, though. Yeah, I would also like to know. I hope he knows that I wouldn't hate him, if, even if he had done something dumb or made a mistake. I wouldn't either. I mean, we've all known each other for quite some time. I would assume that we have a greater bond than just shadowly looking, at, looking down at each other. He's probably just drunk and nervous. Probably. Very drunk. Quite. <laughs> what do you mean? What did he mean by already been to his bedroom? <laughs> now that one wasn't true. <laughs> what? That one, I think I should ask that as well. <laughs> Uh, I have never been to Silk's room. I've seen Silk's library. I've seen the the observatory. I haven't seen the room. Interesting. He's a, he's an interesting guy. 
I don't really know what's going on in that head of his, usually. Yeah, wait, why would Drunk Kemp actually think that I was in his room at one point? Wait, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna hold on to that realization. You can stop laughing, I can hear you. <laughs> What's the realization? Fiori <laughs> thinks that he's, he's daydreaming about him. <laughs> <laughs> it's time to unpack that later. Oh, yeah, yeah, you do. Okay, you're having too much fun with this one, I can tell. <laughs> I'm allowed to have a little bit of fun. <laughs> so, you guys are able to head home. Fiori back t- along the beach towards the Dawnflower Library and Auric into the woods where your family is waiting to congratulate you for your bravery. The moon glints above. Tonight it is a waning crescent. In a few days it'll hit the new moon and then two weeks later the moon will be full. Silk, make me a fortune save, and you have a minus two because you're drunk. Bruh. It's from being sickened. Oh, I know. It's from being sickened. You fool. You buffoon. I did this on purpose. Thank you. Uh, secret, please, remember? Oh, wait, no, is this that a is secret? secret right? You fucking nincompoop. Oh, I'm shit. Sorry. That was too mean. I feel bad now. Mm. Yeah, how bad is that one? Hmm? Did me purposefully sabotaging myself work? Dice will roll. We'll return after these messages. And we're rolling. Rolling? It, it's not going anywhere. And it's not very round. Shh, the red light's blinking and it's almost out of battery. Hey everybody, I'm Avery. I'm Naomi. I'm Zoe. I'm Maria. And we're trapped in the magical land of Yeld. It's not that bad. There's mermaids and magic. And werewolves. And a weird amount of snakes. And we keep dying. We get better. And besides, we're heroes. I guess we gotta find seven magic keys to be able to go home? Not to mention that creepy Prince Dracul guy. And if we don't get home before we're 13, we'll turn into monsters. Avery, hush, that's spoilers. We're not supposed to know that yet. That's alright. Listen to our show, Yelled Play, and you'll find out all about it as we do. Find us at acast.com slash yelledplay, or wherever else podcasts are found. Wait. We have a show? Yeah, and we're gonna kick the prince's butt. You should watch. You shouldn't word it like that. We now return to Dice Will Roll. Silk, you have another one of those dreams. Tell me all about it. I mean, it's the same as before. Ulrich the embrace the taste of it all but Silk this time when you wake up you're not in the kitchen you're not even in your house huh? Silk witch home you stand on the edge of Otari facing the woods where Ulrich lives you're so hungry you know you could make that hunger go away it'll hurt if you don't you would only need to do it once right those desires those ambitions are you really going to let them go (sighs) there are animals in the woods right Yeah, quite a few. Silk bites down on one of his knuckles. I don't think he's in his right mind. Right enough to where he doesn't, you know, start walking to Ulrich's house. But just mad enough to where I think Silk looks for something in the woods. And I pull out my rule book for the subsist rules. 
<laughs> um, <laughs> I will allow you to roll religion instead of survival to allow your newfound instincts to guide you. Okay. He can... Oh, wow. Yeah, that's a fucking good roll. Okay. It feels like a dream. None of it feels particularly real. And most animals you would not be able to catch. But you find one tucked away in a little hole. And you're able to catch it and you consume it. A little rabbit. And it tastes divine. When you come out of your fugue state, you are back at home. They last. You almost d believe that was power of the dream. Were it not for when you pass a mirror, the blood smeared on your face. I like to think that somehow he got into one of his nightgowns and there's just blood all the way down. So you did unfortunately crit fail on your save against forbidden cravings. Sorry. It happens. <laughs> Smile. It does happen is the problem. Um, so you did jump up two stages instead of one. Okay. What stage are we at, would you say? Well, I would probably say that you're stage four. Oh, how many stages are there? Five. Five isn't lethal, but it's not great. It can be lethal if you don't if you act improperly. That's all I'll say. <sighs> okay. By consuming that raw meat, you are uh, saved from being sickened, which is great. You don't want to be sickened all day. That being said, you take 2d6 void damage anyway, this, this morning. Anyway? Mm-hmm. He takes it. So, morning. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Rise and shine. Morning. Jesus uh, Christ. You guys, you guys meet up on the edge of town. <laughs> <laughs> Are you good with us saving the uh, the dinner date for when you come home from the dungeon? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's okay. All right, you you already got a crazy night last night. Uh, let's let's give you some dungeon stuff to I, do. I'm I'm gonna say last night still got to heal, so he's not at 13 HP for this. Yeah, you definitely healed up. Uh, so everyone, get a good night's sleep. You uh, heal up. You restore your spell slots. Uh, make sure that you all do your daily preparations. And then you're able to head back into the dungeon with many people smiling and waving at you all as you pass by. How's everyone feeling this morning? Well, I can guess with Silk, but Fiore and Ulrich, how are you two doing? <laughs> I think... Oh, wait. Fiore, in the morning, you did get uh, Clans Affliction uh, cast on you mm -hmm. by Ma, mm -hmm. who has packed you an extra lunch today and is making sure you're doing extra okay. Uh, she, I think she probably like slept in bed with you last night. She was worried, okay? She was. <laughs> um, you need to make me another fortitude save, please. Secret. Oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah, okay, you're fine. <laughs> Fiori, she cast out very, very hard on you. Hooray! You are doing pretty good. I mean, you can't be certain until the full moon arrives, right? He's gonna be anxious about it till then, but... But, um... You're pretty certain that you're doing okay. Mm-hmm. Ulrich, how are you doing this morning? Oh, Ulrich is doing okay. Probably had to make himself some coffee for the, uh, the may maybe slight headache that he woke up with, but that's about it. <laughs> Day one, oh, I've got a headache from a tetanus shot. Day two, oh, I'm so fucking hungover. Hmm. Well, uh, it wasn't even that bad, probably. It was probably just like a oh, minor headache. I might as well nurse this now. <laughs> uh... As you make your way into the dungeon, uh, what's the plan? How are we approaching uh, the vaults today, everyone? I think that they personally, I think that they should go back to where they uh, where where they were 
with uh, the werewolf guy. Okay. Are you looking to summon the footsteps again, or are you just... Um... I want, well, I mean, uh, I think Fiora would want to see if they could find them, but even if not that, just... That was a pretty good lead, he thinks. Okay. You saw where they went um, in the dungeon. Um, the little platform that Jal was at, it was um, over there uh, to the south. That's where they jumped off into the water and went to the south. So you have an idea that that's where those footsteps went. But there's other things to do down here, one way or another. Oh, yeah. Um, there was that long corridor with the strange glowing lights and the uh, bizarre-looking temple to the north. Um, there was a locked door to the north that led somewhere. How are you all doing as you get back to uh, this floor? And did you follow the footsteps, or are you going in by yourselves? Uh, I mean, Fiore would want to follow the footsteps, personally. Yeah. Footsteps. Okay. Yeah, footsteps. Continue following those footsteps. <laughs> you return to that bathroom, the one where you first found Otari's footsteps. And carefully you tr retrace them. They make their way downstairs. They hide away for a while in that room with the couch, the one which brought you into the clutches of the ghouls when you tried to follow it. You make your way down past the place where Jal Mesmin once hunted. And now those glowing footsteps continue to lead you deeper into the dungeon. So, the footsteps trail along here, along that big platform in the water. They pace around confusedly before they take a plunge into the water and move across to the shore beyond. Not going north like you did when you were following Jal, but to the south, deeper within. What do you guys do? Hmm. Sulk looks disappointed that it goes over the water again. <laughs> he doesn't want to fall in again. Will hmm. Ulrich finally get wet? <laughs> will, that's the big question. Oh, man. Ulrich. Will, is it finally time for Ulrich to, to f get wet so that the gimmick account that tracks your wetness will finally feel vindicated? <laughs> It'll finally hit five? Oh, well, we'll see. I push Ulrich in. What do you guys do? The footsteps are making their way away slowly. So you got to figure out what you're doing. Mm -hmm. uh, do we have to jump across again? Uh, it seems like it. Mm. Will you catch me this time? Well, I certainly tried, but you kind of fell in. Not on purpose. Well, I know, I'm just saying, I would catch you. You just have to... You just have to jump at me, okay? Oh, okay. Hold on, I'll go first. Um, and then Fiori's gonna try and jump across. Okay, make me that legs check. 22. 22? Mm-hmm. Yeah, easy peasy. You leap across Fiore, and you see those footsteps slowly making their way down the cavern to the south. A fucking pipe? Okay. Oh yeah, you see something. We'll we'll deal with that afterwards. What the fuck? Um, Ulrich and Silk, who's going next? I think Silk probably tries to go next. He, like, steps to the edge. He tries his fucking best to jump towards Fiore. Okay, make me that legs check, and Fiore... I will allow you to aid him. Okay. With another athletics check. <laughs> mm-hmm. Please, my athletics is a fucking flat check. All, uh, Fiore, are you a... Uh, are you an expert in athletics? No, I'm only trained. Mm -mm. Okay, so you can't follow the experts. So, Silk, you need to jump across. That's a 12 you 12. rolled. Uh, Fiore? Did, oh my god, 27. That's a crit success. Yeah, okay, so that'll bring you up to a 14. Silk... It's a five-foot gap. You do it. You jump across. Fiore catches you. <laughs> oh, my God. I thought I almost died. You did it, Master Silk. How wonderful. I think what happens is that he jumps and he's about to, like, uh, I think he grabs onto, uh, 
onto Silk's hand and like spins him to the other side yeah. before he can land on the like in the water. And he's like, "Okay, you're not wet." <laughs> <sighs> if you weren't taken, I'd swoon. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Ulrich, come on, man. Can you do it? There is a handsome man trying to catch him. Uh, okay, so see. you rolled me at likes again, Fiore. Yeah, you'll do that. <laughs> Wait. Oh my god. god. Why is he so good at this? Why are you god. so good at it? I don't know. What do you roll, Luke? 14. 30. Okay. Ulrich, you jump across and Fiore kind of catches you as well. You're good. <sighs> Sorry, gimmick account. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna have to suffer a little while longer. <laughs> it's so close. Now, what is that? A pipe? Yes. It's plumbing and down here. In the, the footsteps keep walking, and you guys, yeah, you un- you uncover something quite strange as it moves to the south, huh? A rusty metal chute protrudes from the ceiling to the west here, coming to an end over a pool of slimy water. A huge mound of fungus lies under the tube against the west wall, resting in a strangely monstrous shape. Would any of you like to roll me an occultism check? Sure. Yeah. To see, because like there is a weird monster shape in the pool of slime. I don't know shit, but he'll try. Finally, something I'm really good at. I'm really bad at it. I have a plus one. Damn. We swapped. A little bit. Okay. So, Ulrich and Silk, you won't know what that thing is. Mm -hmm. That is a monster called an Ophalt. Found in castle dung heaps, city dumps and sewers... Ophalts are living amalgamations of wet detritus, sewage, and rubbish. Uh, They carry a disease called wretched weeps that causes the victim's blood to seep from its pores. They're kind of like an insect, which I guess like a beetle nearly, except they gather uh, trash and make it into an armor. And they will sometimes straight up cause that armor to, after they've collected enough, turn into a cocoon. And then a fully grown offalt will explode out, capture its victims, and slowly eat them alive. Ew. Um, it would seem that uh, this was a disposal pool where all the trash and garbage that this place was uh, creating was tunneled up here, and uh, splatted out and an Ophat lived here but it's been 500 years huh is it alive it's so dead in fact you do see those ghostly footsteps dancing circles around it hmm looks like he killed it footsteps stop for a while as if catching their breath before continuing on past this disposal pool to the south of the room which leads to a pool in the water uh silk I have really really bad news can't I just catch a break (laughs) um I think Fiore drops a a like a rock into the water to see how deep it is. Bloop. Not deep at all. It may be three feet deep. Oh. The water is dark, though. It is like a natural cave. The footsteps by now have disappeared out of sight deeper into the cave. We're gonna have to go in it. Oh, Rick, you're about to get wet. It's time. Fuck. Alright, let's see if this works. <laughs> oh, wait. It's no, it's over thing. here. Okay. You're okay. All right, there's no way around it. You're going to have to walk through water. It's going to have to happen. It's here at last. Um. Anyway. The gimmick account only had to wait a couple more minutes. <laughs> <laughs> it was today after all. Um, what do you guys do? The footsteps basically disappeared into a rocky pool. 
I could do something really funny right now. What would you do? <laughs> I could waste a third rank spell and cast Levitate. Wow. <laughs> I'm obsessed with you. <laughs> so, like, genuinely, Silk is in like the process of doing it. Uh, he like he's like pulling out his spell book and like looking at it. Mm, how far down does it go? Uh, about three feet. Silk cast levitate. Are you? <laughs> Silk, how does this look? You are ridiculous. He starts fucking. He starts fucking floating. <laughs> it's not deep. It's gross. Yeah, well, I'm getting it. Well, you can have fun being gross. <sighs> so fucking levitates across the pond. Fiora okay. takes out his sword. It has his, uh, his, you know, the, the, the shield with his, uh, with his torch up, just in case. Mm -hmm. The crystal. Yes. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Alright, you coming? <laughs> because Fiore sees something. Uh, yeah, Alric steps in. The water slushes up, probably up to your hips, Alric. It's cold. Still, and yet, so clean and so dark. And then you all see it. The footsteps coming to a halt. A low, rocky aisle rises less than a foot above the water here, its surface covered with a fine layer of pale green mushrooms and mold. There's a human skeleton, dressed in rotten leather, clutching a rapier, lying in a heap at the center of the island. Huh. I suppose that creature was too much for him. I don't think he knew the way out anyways. Right. Though I didn't expect to... have the path end here. I guess. Yeah. It's the bones of Otari Vashti. At least it's a quiet resting place. In all fairness, his bones look at peace here. The way he is positioned, sitting back against a rock, it doesn't look like... <laughs> better to die like this than to die horribly in battle, right? I never thought I'd see them. Like, I know he's not here, but... I mean, you hear about them your entire life. They must be serene. Yeah. Like, Ulrich, for you as well, like, this is... This guy's one of the reasons you became an adventurer. Yep. <laughs> How's Ulrich doing? <laughs> uh... Not great, but... Uh... Yeah, I guess just not great. <laughs> What do you want to do? Should we leave Mr. Otari here? I don't know. Would it be disturbing him to move him? I don't know. I've never had to make a decision like that before. Hmm. <laughs> I can't say I have either. Hmm. I don't know what to do. I feel he deserves to be at rest with his friends rather than alone in a place like this. I kind of feel that way too. Well, if we weren't the talk of the town already for bringing in a serial killer, we surely are for returning the remains of the town's namesake back. Oh my god. You know, last month my biggest problem was one goblin. <laughs> Borbo peeks up and says This is hated man? No 
beloved. Very beloved. This is Otari. Hated by my strategy, right? Uh, well, that, yes. Then, <laughs> then yes. Completely. Then yes. <laughs> this, this would be the man. Hmm. Maybe he has hero treasure. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Bobo, are you saying we should rob Otari? He's not using this, no? No, but, uh, hmm, you have a point. It is treasure of the hero, the, the, the saint who say, who stopped the Mistress Belcora from taking over the world. <laughs> Silk looks convinced. <laughs> God. I should point out, Silk only has five minutes on Levitate. Uh, he stands on a rock. <laughs> That's not going to stop the flow of time. I know but it means that he won't splash down if they take long enough. Okay, fair enough. But if we're gonna loot him, let's not take our time. Oh my god. Uh... Is that insensitive? <laughs> Sorry. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I mean, we need to take him back anyways. Oh we do god. need to take him back. I, I, I don't think any of us is really gonna use the rapier. <laughs> no. No, I feel like we should bring it back to the temple. Yes, I believe so as well, since the other weapons are also there. Do you guys reach forward and take what's there? I don't like that. Don't just ask us that. Do you- I'm asking, do you take Otari's stuff? Um, I think Fiore is going to very gently- I I think he's literally praying right now. I, I, Alric is investigating the fucking mushrooms that are surrounding this man. <laughs> like, dude, he's poisonous. <laughs> he wants to know. <laughs> is this going to set off anything if we like disturb the bones at any point in time? I think you. I think you recognize the mushrooms. Okay. I don't even think you need to make a, a nature check. I think you just do. Okay. This is your area of expertise, right? Yes, it is. Um, they're bioluminescent mushrooms, okay. um, but they aren't particularly dangerous. Okay. This particular cave just happened to have a lot of them. Kind of keeping his final resting place baited in light as he stumbled into a dead end and succumbed to his wounds. Hmm, okay. I guess it should be fine. We're not going to get hit by poisonous spores, at least as far as I can tell, so it should be okay to move him. Great news. <laughs> Silk watching from afar. You take the bones of Atari and you, I think, like Fiora, you put a hand around his shoulder blade. And then you feel a cold sensation on your chest as you are pushed back. And a voice says, Do you mind much? Oh. Actually. Uh, uh... And sitting up. Oh my god, Fiora's gonna piss himself. There is a man. Oh my god. <laughs> That's in character. <gasps> oh my god. Uh, a ghost sits up before you all. His eyes are white. And his skin is mottled. Uh, there are scabs all over him. Ones which resemble those that might form if you were infected by a disease that makes you bleed through your skin. (laughs) He wears leather armor, striped pants, and has daggers along belts. (laughs) He has a a little uh, goatee that comes out to a point and a long twirling mustache. His hair is long, kept in a ponytail. And as he sits up, and floats a foot off the floor, the ghost of Otari Ilvashti looks down at you, confused for a moment, before he says, Kaelin's breeches! Oh my god, you're Otari! You're not... You're not monsters, are you? <gasps> you're people! Huh. Yeah. Are you yeah. tonight? <laughs> oh my days! Yeah. Uh, oh. uh, my goodness. Oh my god. No, we're not monsters. We're people. <laughs> uh, oh, sorry, sorry. I should point out. Don't worry. I know you're startled and frightened because I'm a ghost, but sure. Oh, thank God you know. 
Oh, yeah. Uh, excuse me, Sir oh. Elf. You see this beneath me? You see what's right here beneath me? It's a bloody skeleton. Oh, I don't know. Some people are in denial. Oh, yeah. I don't know how well you took it. <laughs> Yori is like literally leaning against the wall. Oh, no. I'm, not, I'm in no denial. I know where I am. I've been <laughs> wandering these dungeons for a little bit. Although, you know, can't go too far. <laughs> sure. Look. Uh, greetings. My name is Atari Vashti. Oh my god. You led us here. What? You led us down to you. No, I didn't. We followed your footsteps. Uh huh. Oh. Is that something I can do? Evidently. I. That's bad. <laughs> uh, you don't know that you can do it. No. Oh my god, so cops over. I don't know a lot of things. Um, my name's Otari Vashti. Pleasure to meet you. Uh, in life, <laughs> I was a what? What's wrong? No, nothing. We just know you very well. These two can tell you all about it, I'm sure. The hell do you mean you know me well? What? The town we're from is called Otari. <laughs> That's a weird coincidence. <laughs> no, it's, it's really not a coincidence, even a little bit. No, the... The uh, mayor is the descendant of Yusufana. What? You're, um... I, <clears throat> I'm sorry, um... <laughs> hey, Casey? Yeah, uh, they... Your friends are... are... It's been a really long time, but they, uh, didn't... They stopped adventuring, and they settled in the area. They name the town after you. Did we win? Yeah. Yeah. They survived. They... Yes. They did. <laughs> um. Kaden. <laughs> um. Sorry. Oh my god. Uh, well. Uh, how many years has it been? 500. 500? Doesn't feel like it, huh? Oh, oh it feels longer. I was really taking it a few millennia by now. Oh. Oh, God, it's so boring down here. Uh, oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, um, uh, uh, yes? You, oh. Cadence reaches. Okay. Uh, sh- the, the, uh, travelers! <laughs> I come bearing a warning. A warning? Great doom awaits us in this dungeon. <laughs> uh-huh. What great doom is that? The rat of Belcora and her agents. We thought it was all resolved when we fought her. I did. I thought we'd won. But no, something far more sinister awaits you now than ever awaited the Rose Ga- And... That's when the light in the room shifts, and Atari goes very quiet. Shh. Teori is quiet. He's not going to... Quiet. Behind you, soul. And as you guys kind of stand there, you turn and look over your shoulders because there's something happening in the path behind you all there's a light entering the tunnel from whence you came Otari freezes in his place and he looks as it comes closer and then the source of the light reveals itself a glowing skull emerges into the visibility. Beforehand it was just a light, but now you see that burning skull with alien light following behind it. It is flanked by two smaller lights, ones which barely seem like physical forms, almost like a tangle of hair made of glowing strands of light. They swim through the room like fish, and that glowing skull comes closer when its eyes settle on you, it shrieks out. And Otari yells in fear. 
Oh! <laughs> Quick to arms! He says, and he pulls out a ghostly rapier. It's the eyes of the empty dead! Her agents! Oh, they know we're here now! And you're on a timer! Quick, boys! Let's show them what an adventuring party can do! Okay! <laughs> we're gonna fucking die! <laughs> Will o' wisps! flanked by smaller ones, shriek forward, moving in unnatural patterns towards the island upon which Otari Ilvashti died. The ghost of the legendary adventurer pulls a sword, step forward and points. Silk, you twirl out your pistol. Ulrich, you raise your bow. And Fiore, you turn, scimitar in hand, as these monstrous creatures surge forth, bringing the light of an evil from deep below before you.